Thank you so much for hanging in there without your weekly tank restoration fix last week. Your patience is much appreciated. I'm still a little bit under the weather, but there is a lot going on at Oz Armour at the moment. This week, we're following Rob and Ryan as they perform some maintenance on the M110 howitzer, but before they can do that, they have to play a little bit of tank Jenga. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Oz Armour Fest, there are over 40 running vehicles that have to be in tip-top condition. Our mechanics, Rob and Ryan, are working hard to get everything running smoothly. This is Tiny Teddy, a Vietnam veteran M113 fire support vehicle. It's an extremely popular ride vehicle and really reliable. have quite a bit of shuffling to do to get the vehicles in the right place and to pull out the ones they need to work on. So we're going to bring bat, bat out, Humvee's going to go back to where its original spot was and then this will go back in and then M110 will come out. Comes forth. Yeah. The BAT or Atilleriski Tiagac Jazoli is basically the world's largest pickup truck. It's a Soviet artillery tractor built on a T-54 chassis and has enough room for your whole extended family to ride in. The Humvee you've already seen on the channel can now go back into its proper spot. to take a look at that. Now Tiny Teddy can get back into the spot where the Humvee was, and then finally we can pull the M110 out and the boys can get stuck in.
people are like, yeah. Possibly. I'm just trying not to graze my knuckles. Um, so we've got external tanks. A bit easier to manage. A bit easier to manage, yeah. Easy to clean. All that sort of stuff. Less less fuel sitting in there as well. So yeah. it looks like we've probably got 50 litres all up, I'd say. Oh yeah, that's alright. 25 right. a tank, yeah. The amount of driving we do, it's probably... Yeah, not. yeah, it's... Yeah, it's plenty of fuel. Um, this is the same engine that we'll be using in our Grant tank restoration. I know it's been a while since we've had an update on that project, but there have been some heavy delays in some parts arriving. I promise it will be worth the wait though. See where that fuel's coming from. And that's leaking. Um, so that is your full line there. Yeah. And we're up here. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get rid of some of the engine oil. The engine oil has been heavily contaminated with diesel. And we're not quite sure how this has happened. The sump is also over full. Rob uses this vacuum to pump out as much oil as he can before dropping the bung under the vehicle. How many of these do you reckon you'll fill up? Uh, out of the top here, probably two or three before we uh, look at taking the bung out the bottom. Man. So it's just so over full. How's it look? Very, very runny. Very, very diesely. Not ideal. When the vehicle is running, a pump pressurizes the oil system and throws it all throughout the engine, keeping all the moving parts lubricated and cool. In this engine, the fuel injectors run inside this housing. Over time, these fuel lines, due to the vibrations, develop cracks. And when this occurs, it sprays diesel all through the housing, which eventually drains out and makes its way into the sump. This is exactly what was happening previously, but the lines were repaired not that long ago. It seems they're still intact and fitted correctly. So it looks like there hasn't been an oil change since the repair. Yeah, yeah. I just wonder that how should be much... about the right level now. Okay. <laughs> I just wonder how much um, sprays out when we out of there. It should be too much. What is that? That's uh, a bit of oil getting sprayed back out. <laughs> Very runny oil. Runny oil is not good oil. Is this expert Kurt mechanic tip number two? Yep, that's right, <laughs> expert Kurt in the house. As Rob marvels at my mechanical wisdom, he undoes a floor plate to get access to the sump bung to drop the rest of the oil. Whoa. Straight back in. Yeah. What a time to be filmed. That was that was <laughs> skillfully done. Yes. Skill. Skill. <laughs> Could probably put that in the fuel tank. Eh? Yeah. It'll, it'll it'll run on it. It'll run. Oh, you're kidding. No. Would it actually? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's made its own little vortex in there. Because it really shouldn't be running out that fast. Oh man. Oh, you got the rocket cover off, haven't you? Yeah. Is that it? It's all out? Uh, uh, no, it's still going. Oh, it's still going. Yeah, but not because. Yeah, that light's 16, isn't it? Yeah. Later. And you suck to how much out of that? Uh, so, fair well, bit. Yeah, probably. There's a. Lifting lug in the way. It's going to be fun. Just angle grind him off. There we go. Hopefully, something like that will work. These are the oil filters. They are on the list to change out as part of the service anyway, but they will be full of contaminated oil as well. Judging by the untouched oh, yeah. paint around the bolts, it doesn't seem like they've been changed in a very long time. Even though we only drive this vehicle oh, at Oz Armor Fest once a year, out, it's still very important to keep everything in service. I was like, oh, that'll work, and then I didn't realise, like, I guess. Just tip it in the hole. Maybe we can use that sucker thing and oh, suck yeah. it out of there. I'll just go let it all drain. Yeah. Surgeons. 
shouldn't like being laid down. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Oh, hang on, got a kink. Okay. Maybe put a little cup in the coffee cup holder underneath it. Yep. Can you do that? Go. That work? Expert Kurt is on fire today. It's too late. We're there. Yeah. We're, we're, we're into it. We're not doing it though. We're just going to be doing. Learn by doing. Pumping. Yeah. I might try and see if I can get something to direct it into that. Is that bit of paper? <laughs> not off. Okay, you ready with the suction? Yeah. Yep. Alright, suction. No. <laughs> Scalpel. Yes. Scalpel. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So yeah, cartridge insert. Sits in that housing. Right, so, yeah. and do they just un unbolt or something? Yep, so this bolt here, that bolt there is a big long bolt, goes all the way through, the threads up into here. Okay. the housing, yeah. It's on there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Well, here we go. Yep. Look at that. Wow. Now, as I've said previously, I realize this sort of thing is kind of old news to most of you. It's an oil filter, so what? But seeing how all of this comes together, marveling at the workmanship of the parts and following Rob and Ryan in their trade is a real joy to me. It's hard to tell when this was done, but I'd say it would be a fair time ago. Oh. That looks pretty watery still. Yeah, it's got a lot of, um, a lot of diesel on it. Diesel on it, yeah. Right here. We need to get some tension against it. Oh, yeah, it's still like, yeah, I don't know. The unknown nut. Oh, go. So there's like this washer yeah, smile in there. Oh, there's also like a thing eh? Oh, was it that way? Oh. Yep. And there's this here, you see that? Yep. So that goes like that. That way. And there's a washer and a, a uh, rubber there. Two. Because we need two. Two new. Yep. yep. Two of them. I'll be back. That one. Where's all that stuff gone? Oh, you got them there? Yeah. So what does all this stuff do? So that will sit on that side, that'll seal. So as you tighten that up, the spring will push onto that and um, like this, and that's gonna seal here around that rubber seal. Right. And then you've also got another rubber seal in here, which is gonna seal on that cone. <clears throat> and then when that pushes up inside that housing, you can see there's like a, a, a milled face on there. That's gonna seal on here. So that's gonna create a perfect seal. So oil's gonna go in through one way, that way, and then come out the other. So you're not going to bypass, so you, it's filtration only. You're not going to bypass particles to go on in. We've got the, um, whatever that thing is, around the right way. <laughs> Space uh, washer seal springy thing. Yep. <laughs> That's the technical term. <laughs> Sounds good. Sweet. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to put this one on? No. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Now to refill the oil.
Too much oil. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the oil alarm's going off. <laughs> Make that a check. That's 10 litres. Yeah. Just on the stick. Just on the stick. Oh, it's just on the stick. Yeah. She's a pretty decent sized engine. Yeah, it'll take a bit. A bit more. Got another five, so that's 10. That'll be 15. While I was unwell, the lads very kindly put their work on hold so we could see this process through. I was hoping to get a little bit more of the servicing process, but unfortunately, there just wasn't enough time. It's time to refit everything and run the engine to circulate the new oil around. This will cause the level to drop as it makes its way into all the different components of the engine. So the lads will need to top it up after it's run for a while. Priming the filters will make this process a little bit quicker as they won't be relying on filling with oil from the sump. Getting there now, mate. I spilled a little bit. Full? Oh, it's close, yeah. Just, it's just like slowly filling now. Yeah. We'll get that lid going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That concludes our oil filling segment. Nice. <laughs> I think I have to get a socket on this, but. That's him. That's it. Done. Lovely. Make sure throttle's all the way back in case we've got to set forward. Uh, actually, just operate the throttle and I'll just make sure it's not getting stuck or anything. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Yeah. Now I've just got to remember where everything is in this. for oil leaks um, so from so we've had these off so we wanted to make sure we're not uh, leaking oil from around these um, oil filled housings you know this area this area the bungs, the bungs are tight and then the gaskets are tight um, also I was having a look around here too we had the rock cover off I'm just looking for, for oil leaks around there as well um, same thing check these hoses no oil leaks coming from here because it's all pressure all coming through into there and yeah that's basically does it, seem, does it seem okay? Seems good, yeah, there's no leaks there. Hold on guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just tip a little bit more oil on it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, oh yep, right on the full line. <laughs> so we check it again? No, that's, no, that's, that's good now. That's Happy good. with that? We, yeah. So you, you, you keep a mental image where that was, yeah. and then we check it after we run it. Oh, after you drive it around. And if it's, it will come up because it will be warm. So yeah. when, when the oil warms up, it will expand. Yeah. Um, so when we check it when it's warm, it should be right at that. When we smell it, we should know. Like, yeah, we can smell yeah it. we'll know. Yeah, yeah cool. Sure. Um, and we'll get these covers on and then we'll take it out for a run. Yeah. And then we'll, after the couple of laps, we'll bring it back in and check that oil level again. Put those armoured plates back on. Yeah, yep. heavily armoured. How's that? Good. Now the boys can take it out for a drive and really get the new oil through the engine.
got to do the air cleaners and um, a bit of a grease up, and that's about it. And it's, I think, Rob, about it, isn't it? Ready to go, yeah. Two sets of panels. And then, like, where are your grease points in that? Um, so, so far, we've got grease points along our hubs, and underneath, we do have some on the swing arms. Uh, where else were they, Rob, in the engine bay? Uh, a couple of on the linkages in the engine bay. Couple of linkages in here. We've done. Now got that cover on. Yeah, and um, other than that, that's that's about it on this thing. Yeah. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. Until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.